HelloFresh is here to help you get cozy this fall. Enjoy the sweater weather with easy-to-follow recipes that include delicious seasonal ingredients. Get up to 14 free meals, including free shipping, with code FACE14 at HelloFresh.com slash FACE14. Welcome to the most magical place on earth, the magical podcast face where exceptional people do mind bending things and break the laws of physics. My name is Jeff Ramsey and with me always, uh, as always, Andrew Panton and Gavin physics. Free. I don't, know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. We just finished recording another episode where yeah, I you've missed the- out on about two minutes of just bewilderment and then we press record again. If you haven't listened to the last episode, go listen to it and then come back and listen to this one. That we stopped down. Eric said, "What the fuck?" Nick said, "I'm scared," and <laughs> I honestly don't know what to think about it. I I feel like Andrew is pranking all of us now. No, I absolutely not. I thought you were pranking me when you're like, "What did you say?" I prank you. I I, I wrote the number before you said it. Because I couldn't see the screen. I didn't know what you did. I thought you didn't say it publicly. I thought you are just going to pretend that it was the right number. And I'm like, he's fucking with me. There's no way that it just happened. And it did. And even if you did see the screen, there's no way you could have got the 19 ball out and taken a picture of it that quickly. Absolutely not. Yeah. No. He would have had to have already had 60 photos like in a file tree. And then he would have to like rapidly quick on it. No, nobody's going to put that much work into that, that bit. Right? No way. No. no. Absolutely not. That, that was fucking crazy. I feel like we've been wrong about this whole Gavin being lucky thing. I feel like it might be you, Jeff. You might be the golden child. Yeah, I child. guess wrong. Well, maybe. I, this, I think this boat, I, I'll tell you what, I feel, uh, I, feel, I feel like if Najee Harris knew what was going on here, he'd, he'd feel very good about himself right now. Things are looking up for him. Let's put this to the ultimate test. Once again, the true, if, if you're better than Gavin. Red or black? Red or black? Uh, black. I mean, I don't know why you're betting on colors when you should clearly be betting on 19. <laughs> That's a fascinating point. That's a great point. I'm going to do colors and 19. 19 is our lucky number now. <laughs> okay, it's tell a, me a color. Face officially color has again. a lucky number. Uh, b- uh, what, what am I doing? Red or black? Red. Okay. Oof. I'm putting three on red, two on 19. <laughs> 19 is red. If 19 was black, this would be a problem. <laughs> Can't parlay a roulette spin, Eric. That's ridiculous. <sighs> How dare you? Okay, the ball's rolling around. Coming in. It's bouncing. Still spinning. I've, I've been going with the wrong person the whole time. I will be very... <laughs> it's black and it's two. Magic doesn't exist. It's not real. <laughs> it's not real. It's black and I it's think, two. I think magic does exist. You just can't use it like that. It, deci- it decides when it, when it wants to be used. Yeah, okay. our, our magic just re- re- <laughs> it re- rejects you every time you try and use it. <laughs> <laughs> what we really need to do is when Jeff's in Vegas, he needs to play 19 on roulette. He does. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'm, uh, Absolutely. I'll do it and I'll report back. Dude, this Hen- Henry farted so bad. <coughs> you, you got gassed by the dog? I'm going ga- to get gassed out of the room. Jesus. That's brutal. I'm looking in jersey numbers. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't think any of them are 19, unfortunately. Do you gamble every day? No, not at all. No. I don't know, dude. I, I've been talking to Andrew quite a bit since you've been out of town, and I've been having a lot of conversations with what I would call dark Andrew. And that, is, uh, that is like midnight our time Andrew who has had a, a bad run and is, in, in, in a, is not <laughs> in, in a, a good place. place. And I feel like we've had a lot of those conversations in the last, since you've been gone. So, Well, it's... It's because you expressed interest and in wanting to uh, do some NFL bets. So I've been trying to update you on what's been going. I've been trying to let you vicariously live through my misery. <laughs> yeah, well, I, and I definitely have been. I just feel like that misery has been pretty daily. No, it's weekends. I'll, I'll, th- I'll throw a bet on on like Saturday. I don't mm. bet all that often. And if I'm going to bet, it's mainly during the NFL season. Which we're getting into. Okay. What about the Astros Rangers bet you lost your shit on? That's well, I parlayed that with NFL preseason, and that was a Saturday, <laughs> I think, or a Sunday. It's a weekend. Those don't count. I bet the Astros, Gavin, the, the Astros were this huge favorite against the shitty other baseball team, and they lost in the first inning. They dropped down 
The Astros are down 3-0. Fifth inning, they come back to make it 5-2. I'm like, there's a hope. There's some hope in this game. Next time I look at the score, the Astros are losing 2-12. to They got demolished <laughs> by one of the worst teams in baseball. Terrible luck. <sighs> I actually, I actually have a, a little sports thing that I read about. I, I don't know. If, it, stop me if you guys have heard this story, but have you guys heard the thing that happened with uh, Bishop Sycamore High School on ESPN like last weekend? No. Uh, it's the, they were like a fake school, right? Or something? So maybe, yeah. So there was this, from time to time, ESPN will show high school football games, especially when they're 1A and there's a, there's a ton of like top tier talent that's going to go uh, into college. And I actually... I actually skipped through the game. I was looking for Emily and I were looking for preseason football and we stopped on it. And I was like, ah, this is fucking high school. And we kept going. But uh, up, so on, I think it was last Sunday, but it may have been two Sundays ago. There was a high school game with one of the best high school uh, football teams in the country. And they played this other team called Bishop Sycamore High School and beat the dog shit out of them. The game was <laughs> 58 to nothing to the point where pretty early on, the announcers were saying stuff like, should they call the game? Like I, people, they were worried about the other team's safety. They were getting, they were so outmatched and getting so manhandled and so beaten. They were like, I don't know if this is safe for these two teams to be playing. And it became very, it, it was billed as like two tier one football teams with some of the best talent in the nation playing against each other it became apparent very quickly. That was not the case. Then uh, they started to dive into it. And discover like ESPN was like, we're sorry, we shouldn't have put this game on the air. It comes to find out, you come to find out that the the <laughs> game was actually scheduled by a marketing company. Uh, well, I guess that's something yeah. that happens. Like marketing companies schedule high school games for ESPN. They've been doing it for a long time. Then it came out that it might not be a real school that doesn't have like a, it has a <laughs> PO box for an address. And then there was some. Uh, then it came out that the the coach of the football team might have an active arrest warrant for fraud. <laughs> then it, oh it came out that this team that played on Sunday also played a game on Friday. So they played two high school games in two days. Then it, w they, people started to dive in and realize this team has never won a game before and have, has no business being uh, <laughs> playing against this other team. Then people discovered that a lot of the players on the team weren't actually high school students and were adults. It just kept getting weirder and weirder. <laughs> That's so strange. You have made yeah. me want to dig deeper into this. It's similar to that that mentally handicapped was it basketball team who all turned out to be just like <laughs> they weren't they shouldn't have been in the Paralympics. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I've heard that. that. I've heard of. I know that a movie called The Ringer exists, and I do not oh. think that that was based on a true story. That was Johnny Knoxville. Yeah, in the early two thousands. I think that's sort of the plot of that movie. I don't really remember what that movie was about. I I just don't understand what the goal would be. Was it to I, like, what's the play there? What, what, where's, where's the fraud? You know, is it to legitimize this Bishop Sycamore school or was it to make the other team look that much better? Like, what's the play there? You know what I mean? Like, I can't figure out what the grift is. That is bizarre. That's crazy. So many levels deep. Yeah. And I haven't, I haven't read up on it lately, so there may be more information to it. It's just like, it was just crazy. Like, it was just like every story was like wackier than the next. And they were just like, the, keep peeling back these layers that made no sense. This sort of reminds me of a conversation we had, Gavin, about how football in Europe works with the teams in different leagues. I feel like you got totally lost in that conversation. What do you mean? You just seem very confused. In what way? I, no, I wasn't lost. I understood okay. everything he was saying. I was just saying it's a lot of details. Like he gave a lot of surface information that would be interesting, interesting to explore deeper. But you were like, why can't they jump up from the bottom division into the Premier League? Oh, I see. You just fucking threw. Now I'm confused. I thought you were talking about I seem confused during Jeff's conversation about the high school team, not our football <laughs> conversation. That's why I was like, now what are you I'm talking confused. about? I followed that. I followed that closely. Wait, so you change the subject to a new subject and then I respond to it and you think I'm still in the old subject? Yeah. Well, you just said you seem confused in that conversation. I didn't feel like we had gone uh. far enough into the conversation <laughs> to call this conversation. I misunderstood <laughs> you're referencing the text conversation that we had. Gavin is explaining to me and correct me if I'm wrong. You may already know this, Jeff, but I guess in the Premier League, the bottom two teams get dropped to a lower league and the top two of the league below go up to that league. Yeah, it's called relegation. Like shifting. Right, yeah. that's what it's called, right, Gavin? Relegation? Yeah, you get promoted yeah. or relegated. Yeah, and it's the top of, th top of bottom three teams. I think that shouldn't end. I think that should be at all levels of play. I want a team to start at the Premier League and then be so bad that they're in like a youth league. 
at that by the end of it. Like I don't I think you should be able to just keep going down if you keep losing. Can you go keep going up? Yeah, but that that is what happens. If you lose if you lose if you're bottom 3 again the next season, you would go down again. But there's a limit to it. You said there was a cap of like, you can only fall so far. I want it to be like, I no, spent $5 <laughs> billion dollars on this team. I'm now playing in a field behind an elementary school. Like, yeah, I, mean- I want there to be a huge collapse. <laughs> so you want to see Manchester City go from the Premier League to a club team? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, Even, like, like whatever's lower. I want like Manchester United to be in a league where one of the parents has to bring orange slices every game. Like that's the, the fall <laughs> of... I mean, you do get Premier League teams who may drop like two or three divisions, but it would take two or three years to do it. You would have to you would have to lose multiple back to back seasons. You can't just jump three down in one year. Yeah, no, I I know that. I'm saying year by year. I just I I, okay, I like well, the yeah. idea of a billion dollar franchise being in an orange <laughs> slice league division and somebody who runs a youth team all of a sudden being in a fucking stadium. That's yeah, I, cool. I, love the, I love the idea of some local village having to go to Old Trafford <laughs> to play yeah. Man, Man U because they've been relocated so many times. What a, what, ha, like, can we look that up? Like, what's the farthest a team has fallen from the yeah, well, How would you Google that? I don't know. I mean, th- this all came about because uh, I was watching Ted Lasso and there's, they mentioned that in, in the show where I guess the NFL, if you finish bottom of the league, you just come back again next year yeah. and play again. And you, yeah. you're still in the NFL. Well, there isn't really a minor leagues for the NFL. Like it's just. But what college. if you suck? Do you just lose over and over and over again, and, the, and you you don't go anywhere? And there's no opportunity for a new team. How do you get a new team? Money, a lot of money. You, you and don't. A, like a you just shifting. It's that's they. they you, what you're describing right, is right. the Orlando Magic. It sucks. You just don't get to be a good team. How for does a very the long whole time. sport not just get really stale? Yeah, Jacksonville Jaguars. Great call. Yeah. You get a number one pick. You're dead last. You theoretically are getting good talent. The way it's supposed to work is the worse a team does, the better they get. They do in the draft, so they get access to the best players that are coming into the league. So it's supposed to balance it out. Hmm. Like if you were the wor- like you were the Cleveland Cavaliers, a perennially shitty team that underperforms in a small market, then you get the first pick and you get to pick LeBron James. And they did. Doesn't seem like a huge incentive. Like the the risk of dropping from one league to the league below is financially huge, like ginormous amount of money different. So yeah, that sounds I cool. don't understand the incentive to <laughs> play well in the NFL if you could just sit at the bottom year after year. It, well, if you don't play well for long enough, that you might lose your team. They might just move to another city. But also, there is no, there's no league below that for you to play yeah. in. Yeah, it would be like the <laughs> top like- CFL team would go up to the NFL and then just lose every game. Like, it wouldn't... There's no... Yeah. That's it's insane, especially considering the size of this country. There's one league, insane. Well, there's the XFL is going to come back. I think next year. Yeah, think but it's if you're leagues. saying it's not in relation to the NFL, it's not. It's not like you drop into that one. Oh no, absolutely not. This could technically work. What you're describing could work in the NBA because there is a minor leagues. So there's a D league, and it could work in baseball because there's the you know there's a ball. But yeah, it's just there's just no there's no infrastructure for that in football. They could theoretically well, do it with baseball and basketball, though. The problem isn't the fact that they're it, it's not just a structure problem. It's a all the best talent plays in one league problem. Like you, you even though there is an infrastructure in basketball, nobody's opting to play in the G League over the NBA. Yeah, I said D so League. I meant G League. Sorry, you're right. Hockey. I mean, it's a completely other thing for the draft. The draft in hockey is sort of ridiculous where. Even like unless you have a top top pick, you're like, yeah, that player will help us in three years. Can't wait. That's fun. Like there's no the NFL has massive turnover. And I don't know if football like soccer football has the same where a team could be wildly awful one season and then have a great off season and become a playoff team. I don't know what the competitive shift is. And I should also point out that in in soccer football, there's no playoffs either. You just finish. You just play every other team twice and then that's it. That's no fun. Yeah, that's no fun. <laughs> and if you have the same amount of points at the top of the league, you just see who scored more goals. I learned about a thing recently about, so goal differential is a big thing in football, right? For like determining seating or whatever. I don't know if that's across all football. In this league specifically, there is a tournament and goal differential between teams was a big factor in like the playoff setting or, or I guess who would advance to the finals. 
and the two teams that are playing each other, one was in the finals, the other one was out of it, and they needed to win by two goals to advance. For this tournament, they created a weird, like, let's make it spicy. They decided that a golden goal would be worth two, which, correct me if I'm <laughs> wrong, Gavin, a golden goal is if you score with the extra time remaining, right? Like, it ends the game. That's the last goal, essentially. Is that what a golden goal is? Golden goal, yeah, I think they stopped doing it. But yeah, it was uh, an extra time. The first goal ended the game. Yeah, so they had this rule for this tournament where a golden goal now c counted for two. The team that needed to win by two was winning by one, and there was like six or seven minutes left, and they thought, we probably aren't going to score within this time. We need more time, and we need two goals. It's better if we just score on ourselves and force <laughs> it to go into overtime. <laughs> so they just played pass with the keeper back and forth for a bit, and then they scored in their own net, and the other team was like, what the fuck is going on? And then they realized, oh, there's this weird two goal golden goal rule. So there is a brief period of time before like overtime started where one team was trying to score in either net because they could lose by one. They just couldn't lose by two. And the other team had to protect both goals. And they were not <laughs> the team that needed to protect both or score in either didn't do it. They went to overtime and the team that scored on themselves then scored the golden goal one and pushed the other team out of the finals because they scored on themselves and got into that position. That is like batshit. Yeah, it's great. I wish that there was more ridiculousness like that in football. That is sort of in the spirit of my rule of teams can fall endlessly. Yeah, <laughs> that would make me way more interested in that sport. What is HelloFresh? Well, with HelloFresh, you get pre-measured, fresh ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. Where else would they deliver it to? Your door is where you want it. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's three things that it is. That's awesome. And that is why it's America's number one meal kit. And hey, fall is busy, right? But with HelloFresh recipes, you'll save time you'd otherwise spend meal planning, shopping, chopping, yada, 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 so you can get back to what matters, raking up leaves, winterizing your lawn stuff. It's a nightmare, and you don't have time to cook because you're getting ready for snow. HelloFresh's family-friendly menu is a big win for back to school as well, with easy, delicious recipes for drama-free dinners. And it's a better value. HelloFresh is over 30% cheaper than shopping at grocery stores with pre-portioned ingredients that ensure you won't spend money on excess food that ends up going in the trash. Can't eat it if it's in the trash. It's the trash. Don't eat food in the trash. Don't do it. So go to HelloFresh.com slash Face14 and use code Face14 for up to 14 free meals, including free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash Face14. Code FACE14 for up to 14 free meals and free shipping. That's HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. There's so much going on in the world, whether it's stuff you're excited about like football season or stuff you'd rather not think about like work and life and stress. Uh, you can't always control the vibes out there, but you can always control the vibes in your head with a pair of Raycon wireless earbuds in your ears. I use them on my bike rides. I go for bike rides almost every day, pop in some uh, wireless Raycon earbuds, and I can listen to a podcast or uh, listen to some music. I will say uh, I tend to listen to them low or on one side because you don't you gotta pay attention when you're riding your bicycle. You don't want to get surprised uh, by a car. Whether you use them to pump up, wind down, work, or work out, Raycons are the go-to for on-the-go audio, and the new everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever before. With an improved rubber oil look and feel, it, uh, it feels and looks uh, it's sleek. I'll say that. That's a good way to describe it, sleek. And an optimized gel tip for the perfect in-ear fit, these are impressive before you even start listening. There's also an all-new awareness mode for when you need to listen to your surroundings instead, a la when you're on a bicycle. Eh? Raycons offer up to eight hours of playtime and a 32-hour battery life. I wish I had the kind of stamina to ride my bike that long, but I don't, so they more than cover it. There's also a built-in mic you can use to take calls on your earbuds at the press of a button, and they start at half the price of other premium audio brands. They also come with a 45-day happiness guarantee. So right now, 
Face listeners can get 15% off the Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash face. That is buyraycon.com slash face to save 15% on Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash face. <laughs> Eric says, what was the thing we needed to cover in this episode? Yeah, we kind of went on a weird sports turn. We have a few things we can talk about. You guys want to talk about your jet ski? Was that on anyone's list? What we just spent 20 minutes talking about? <laughs> no, no, not at no. all. I, I don't even know how we got. We got there because I drew 19 from the bing, the ping ball. But oh, so yeah. we talked about we <laughs> blew off this episode on on the end of last week's episode. Yeah, okay. mm-hmm. that was a great flub, by the way, Andrew. I don't want that to I, be glossed I over. I didn't. Was... I was going to call it a ping pong machine, a bingo machine, and a lot of machine, and it just came <laughs> ping bah, 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 bah. <laughs> Uh, machine <laughs> well gavin do you want to talk about the jet ski adventure we went on jet skis um so i i think i wasn't imagining jet skiing right because when <laughs> because when you were describing how you were going on jet skis and you said you went like 50 miles an hour i just thought you were exaggerating i just thought you were rounding just plucking a random number and you would have been going like 18 miles an hour or something but they really go 50 miles an hour. I, we got on them, <laughs> we went, got out of the slow bit, and then Emily p- f- absolutely floored it. And I think my mouth just <laughs> fell open because I was still like, I was still like, trying to remember all the stuff the guy told me. I looked down until it'd be like, okay, well, there's the speedometer. There's, okay, here's how we did. I looked up, you were on the horizon. You were like going <laughs> around the curvature of the earth. You were hauling ass. They go so fast. <laughs> And I, it really took me a while to like to brave it and get up to that speed. I think I, I, I was freaking out at thirty because at that speed, <laughs> you know, any tiny little bump in the you know in the waves will just send you into the air. So I was yeah. like, oh god! And so you'd see a wave coming, and I'd immediately let off because I was like, I'm just going to go <laughs> sailing off this thing when I yeah. hit that. And I would slow down to like what felt like maybe fifteen. And it would just slam my ass against the sea. I'd be like, oh, and I'd be like, oh, damn, I'm glad I wasn't going thirty. <laughs> I feel like every wave you had visions of Kanye flying through the air. That, like, that could Dude, be, you know. yeah. well, that is one thing. As we were, because we did about, we did three hours, which I learned is maybe a little long. Uh, usually we do two. Uh, but I felt like a- every minute was closer to the inevitable accident that we're building towards. Like the second <laughs> Gavin and I got on the, on the same water in two different jet skis, I just realized <laughs> that... It, that an accident is like is an inevitability. That is metaphysical certitude <laughs> that Gavin and I will get into a jet ski accident together. And it didn't. We dodged it that day, but I can feel the gravity <laughs> of that accident pulling I, us forward. The bad thing is, was that the amount of time it took me to gain just a little bit of confidence was extremely short. I would say after twenty minutes, I was just trying to. I was like finding the the smooth bits of the water, You're trying to get out of the way of other boat wakes and stuff. To the point where I was like, all right, let's see, let's see how fast this one goes. And I would just eke up a little bit each time. Like 10 minutes later, I'd be like a 40. And then eventually I was just like, I'm just going to hold this down and see what I could get to. And I got it to the point where the speedometer literally stopped at 55 <laughs> miles an hour. And then I let off and I was like, oh, I'm getting some confidence now. I, I'd say 30 minutes later, I had a sustained three minute period where I was just going 55 miles an hour. And, it, and at that point I was like, this thing's not fast enough anymore. I want to go even faster than this. And I, there was a one point where I was, I was holding it down. The, the jet ski sounded like it was going to explode. It had just a sustain. I was like, this is going to overheat. I was sustained 55 for about three straight minutes. And I looked down at the fuel gauge. And as I looked, it just went bloop. And it plopped down like one whole bar. <laughs> I will say, at the end, I asked you, I was like, how do you think? How do you feel about it, man? And you said, it's amazing how quickly you go from, holy shit, 50 miles an hour is so fast on a jet ski to, why won't this thing go faster than 50 miles an hour? Yeah, it, I could. Which I, is the same totally with me, true. The same with me on roller coasters. Like, if I go to a theme park, <laughs> the first roller coaster I set foot on, I'm thinking, why am I on a roller coaster? This is terrifying. I hate this. I got my eyes closed. I'm like gripping as hard as I can. <laughs> But maybe three or four rides later, I'm like, why isn't there one that goes 150 miles an hour? <laughs> <laughs> so then you have to, you have to just try other stuff. Like they were like, well, you know, if you tip over a jet ski, here's how you write it. You you don't have a lot of time. I think what was it like 60 seconds or something to tip it back yeah. over before it's 60 sticks? seconds. Yeah. So I was just thinking, how violently can I turn on this thing? <laughs> I was just <laughs> thinking, like, what does it take to tip one of these? And then I started chasing someone's boat. I was probably like 100 feet behind it. And just doing little jumps off the wakes, just doing some some stuff that 
you shouldn't have been doing the first time you've ever ridden a jet ski. But oh my god, it was fun. And then and then Jeff and I were taking it in turns to do little jumps over this week. <laughs> the uh that is like the best part about being on the jet ski is is driving behind a bigger boat and just jumping off their wake. You feel like a like a horse fly on a on the back of a cow <laughs> or a horse, you know, and it's like trying to swat you away and you're just like you're just like jumping around it, bugging it, but it is so much fucking fun. I'm really glad you enjoyed it because uh, it is like the most fun. It's weird. You really get a feel, like a visual feel about what the water is like. Like there's areas where it is just flat. There's nothing happening yeah. and you can really go. Then there's areas of chop where it's like a, a small amount, but you know that if you go too fast, you will just slam your asshole on the seat. It will like pound your spine. Yeah. But then there's like this in-between phase where there's a lot of small waves and you can absolutely floor it over those because you just kind of glide along the top of them. So you'll yeah. hear it go like tick, 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 as you're just sailing over the very tops. So it's like immediate, it's like you, you learn all this stuff just from, from looking at the water in front of you. And then you end up being a pretty good judge of what you can do. Do you remember the, the, the prize we found floating in the water that we all <laughs> almost hit? <laughs> what? Oh my God. <laughs> there was a point where we were jumping wakes and we were like getting airborne. And I jumped a bit, like we jumped a big thing and came down in the water and kind of like kadunk and looked up. And I looked to my left and I screamed out loud because there was a giant hoof looking at me floating out of the water a foot away. And we look over and there's just a giant dead fucking deer just a floating in the Jesus middle, Christ. in the middle deer. of Lake Austin. Like, I, just, I don't know how much a deer is, oh. like hundreds and hundred, 800 pound deer, maybe, I don't know, 600 pound deer to the entire fucking thing. <laughs> just like his dead eyes st staring out of the sky. Oh my and his God. Fucking hooves. It was, oh, it was gruesome. How close were you to landing on it? Probably within like three or four feet. Jesus yeah, did, did you go like alongside it or over it? Because I, I feel like you landed I went to the right really, of it. yeah. I landed like next to it, went ah, and then moved over to the right. But I, behind us was about four hundred boats pulling, uh, like skiers and skim boarders and wakeboarders and shit. So I gotta imagine that a couple of people probably hit it or had closer run-ins with it than we did. So I have two immediate questions. Uh, okay. One is. Jeff sent me a video of the jet skiing experience with you, Gavin. Is that up anywhere? Has have people seen that yet? We should put that. Put it on Instagram, I think, won't we? Yeah, I think we'll put it up with this episode. I uh, that's a good call. I haven't uploaded that. We yet. should we put that. that on Instagram. Maybe even I'll I know it's only Slack, short, but like right a now. YouTube thing. I don't know, but we should have that in a place where people could see. I love that video. It's fantastic. I'm a big. <laughs> that was just that's the only thing I knew about this experience going into it. The second question I have. You guys mentioned accidents and we're talking about sports. In my mind, I don't know if this exists. I assume it doesn't. Could we do some form of like jet ski jousting, jousting with like two sticks and like a giant pillow or like a foam thing you and just die. smash into it? I don't, I'm not saying 50. I'm not saying we're going your crazy speed. I feel like there's a medium. I feel like this could be the evolution of jousting. I would pay so much money to watch two jet skis go parallel. Well, I feel like the thing is, even if you collide accidentally head on at 10 you're gonna bang heads with the other person at 20 miles an hour combined no it's you're not you gotta be there's a separation there has to be a barrier i'm regulating the sport you're not just <laughs> you gotta, going you gotta ocean to sticks, ocean though yeah well that's fine you won't die from that i'm just saying we get a bear there's a way to do this i don't like that you're immediately cutting down my idea on a regulation <laughs> aspect of it like you're ignoring any of the fun you're just like there are safety concerns what if the jet skis ram into each other what do you think about this, Jeff? Uh, I think Andrew uh, should spearhead it. I, th I think, Andrew, I think you should come jet skiing with us yeah. first and then see if you still think that's a good idea. Yeah. It seems I'm like an saying Andrew it would idea. be fun to watch. I didn't say it was a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, I agree. It would, be, it would be fun for me to watch you guys do this. I don't want to run this league. <laughs> I don't want to kill anybody. <laughs> yeah. It's different if you witness it happening. I do think I'm not sure where to go with this, but I feel like we there is more content to be had in the world of jet skiing. I think it's a highest jump quest. I think that's a great idea, Gavin. Because I think, I think we fantastic we both idea. easily jumped. How high do you think we went on our max jumps? Five, I mean, in my feet? head, in my head, like twenty feet. In reality, <laughs> maybe four, maybe <laughs> probably five feet, four or five feet. I definitely got some air. I yeah. got enough air to fucking slam my knee so hard I thought I broke it. <laughs> is that the landed. evolution of the Jeff Trick video? Is the next one going to be a jet ski slow motion? I think it has to be. I just put up the Gavin slow-mo uh, jet ski video in the Slack. 
It's fantastic. Or in the Discord, rather. Yeah, I think I think that's the evolution. Is a jet ski stunt. I wonder. If okay, we, oh, so I wonder if we get one of those floating ramps that you get in GTA. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a, a you're sprunk. calling my idea dumb, and then your reference point is a thing in GTA. <laughs> how do we get, how do we get a, how do we get one of those sprunk ramps? <laughs> 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 we gotta get someone to make us a sprunk ramp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's oh, a great. This so is fun. a great. This is a great place to take the bike trick. The next one, it's definitely. You know what we could do too, Gav? Is we could do uh, synchronized tricks. Ooh, oh. yeah. See, I feel like that's as dangerous in my mind as my jousting idea. You two trying to do tricks at the same time within a frame shot of each other. Yeah, maybe that's what we need to do. H how about this, Andrew? We'll rent a boat. You'll be on the boat. You operate the Phantom, right? And Jeff and I will <laughs> cross paths uh, along the wake. We'll get air and pass each other in the air. Oh like my God! Through, through the frame. A jet ski midair high five! <laughs> God, we're gonna die. We're gonna, you're gonna I have to step in and, and, and say yeah. no. Like, de for the sake of my continued job and like you guys not dying or like breaking, I have to say no to the midair. That, there's no way. There's no way. You're going to die. You're going to rip off each other's arms. You know what else Eric said in a way about? 19. 19. I think there's we would a end up. We would end up sat on each other's jet skis facing the wrong way. It would be like that episode of Baywatch where Hulk Hogan gets hit by a jet ski and almost dies. It needs to be one of you would go down. Yeah. Yeah, well, can't open a par card packs with one arm. Yeah, but Hulk Hogan made it. Oh, hey, if Hulk Hogan can make it, we got that going for us. That's true. Wow, so that was Eric noping that one. All right, so All we're right. still we don't know where <laughs> well, we stand with the jet ski. Well, we'll we'll think we we definitely have jet ski uh, tricks uh, that we can do. Maybe yes. maybe not the high five. Maybe we'll work our way up to that. You know, maybe after we show Eric our skills, he'll feel more comfortable. Or maybe you could like add an additional input on this gavin jeff and i were talking about it i feel like the jet ski entertainment market is pretty shallow i feel like we can move in i feel like it's kenny powers number one then you think of the guy from tiger king and i don't think i have a clear number three where like i definitely think of this person in a jet ski thing i remember uh vanilla ice being really big into jet skis that being a thing I don't know why, okay. but I just remember that. When I, in my head, I s associate jet skis with vanilla ice. I feel like that video of Gavin <laughs> has already surpassed vanilla ice and the jet oh, ski for thing. Sure. I think we're already sure. on the podium of jet ski, known for jet ski content. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think we honestly, we should own the podium. Why do you like oh, that absolutely. video so much? Why do I like it? Or why does... Yeah. Why uh, do you like it? It's just, it's a silly, it's a silly video. It's a dumb thing. <laughs> And also without context, I just received that without any point of reference. <laughs> That's the only thing I got. It's a good video. Yeah, I'm excited about the future of jet skiing. Uh, I can't wait to kick it up a notch and, 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 and uh, start diving into some of the cool shit we can do. Also, by the way, how fucking beautiful is Lake Austin and all the houses? Oh, my God. Like, when, you're, when we're not going 1,000 miles an hour, Andrew... There are yeah. all these little channels that you can go in off the main lake that are like we can go in on the jet skis like in, they're like no wake zone. So you go real slow. But it's through all these like there's like islands where houses are and you go under like covered bridges and there's like crazy fucking mansions and all these beautiful homes. Yeah, and, that's like side streets on water. Like you take mm -hmm. a little water street off the main lake and then you see a, a mansion with a volleyball court. It's it's a level <laughs> of wealth that I would describe as absolutely disgusting like yeah. <laughs> filthy levels of wealth on that it's um, it's mental just to look at the houses on there it's pretty cool i'm excited to film on the back of a boat that i assume is moving very quickly with a very expensive camera based off of your idea this yeah is i'll give you a, a sturdy tripod all you gotta do is hit the button when jeff and i hit the Wait. wake and go by each other but how does in real life will be like 25 feet apart how does a tripod work when the thing it's resting on is shaking violently does that still help? Uh, the boat we'll is bouncing out. everywhere. <laughs> like, I don't think the tripod <laughs> does anything at that point. Oh, you set sandbags, bit of rope. <laughs> okay. I'm now excited. <laughs> what I have in my head can't be what you possibly think this will look like. So I'm just excited <laughs> to see what your contraption is for how we're going to stabilize. I think if we tie, if we tie ropes, through, like boats have metal loops, right? They have little holes to put ropes <laughs> through. That's, that's what comes with a boat, right? You know, just wrap that around a tripod. 
have you gotten to a season of Survivor where they do the challenge where they have to hold the bar over their shoulders and they add sandbags to it? They just keep adding weights. That's what I'm imagining your system is for how we're going to level this. I'm just going to have a bar on my shoulders with a bunch of sandbags attached, trying to stabilize for you and you and Jeff to high five or do whatever. Are you a doing. boat guy, Andrew? No, I'm not. Andrew, I like you went the to boat school. You went to boating school. I, well, I didn't. I didn't go to it. The boating school went to my school. It came to me. I did not go to <laughs> boat school. I was in normal school, and they did a whole thing on boats. You attended boat school. I remember this being a big deal back when you were doing your. Uh, I attended your PUBG school, challenge. and it had a boating section that I was very and kind of tying into something else we talked about before. Knots is where I fell apart. I was so determined to ace <laughs> boat school or the boating classes, and then there was the knot section, and it fell apart for me. I'm terrible at knots. Never good at that. Not a not guy. <laughs> <laughs> I have a uh, I have a new this is a little thing, but you know, I've been thinking about Gavin and collecting and how I have uh, all my sports cards and all that nonsense. Yes. And Andrew, you now have your and we haven't really talked about it, but your burgeoning love of uh, collecting classic video games. And uh, I think I've landed on I'm going to put it in the the perfect thing for Gavin to collect. <laughs> I feel like this is going to be insulting. I don't think so. Is it an egg? It's a f- baseball card of an egg. And there's many different kinds. This is the Allen and Ginter Tops 2019 egg card, of which there's probably 30 different parallels. Some are as expensive as $1,000. That's the base egg. I why do you want it. an egg uh, on a card? Why not, dude? <laughs> what do you mean, why not? You love, you love eggs. Is this the reaction that you're expecting, Jeff? Oh, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> and you egg? named my cat. You named my cat egg. Yeah. But it's an owl. <laughs> I just don't know where to start. Like, why isn't that one of a kettle? Why an egg? Well, because this is a famous egg. Why isn't that one of a wasp nest? Because the the wasp nest didn't get 30 million (laughs) likes on Instagram or whatever. This is the egg from the the most liked egg on the most liked thing on Instagram. But why is there? (laughs) God, It's like culturally significant. So they made a card out of it. But there's like many different kinds of that egg. Oh, my God. Look at this eBay page of all the eggs. Yeah. See, all you could collect all those different eggs. $8 Eight dollar egg, forty dollar egg. That one's a, the top one's a thousand dollar egg, five hundred dollar egg, five hundred dollar egg, four eight hundred dollar wow. egg. PSA 10. So you think I should be? I should have a dozen eggs, but they're all baseball I think you, cards. You should be an egg man. You should have the. You should have the collector's dozen. I, I, yeah, I'll start this collection. Oh, all right. a grand though. That's a lot for a card with a picture of an egg on it. Well, I hope you get lucky in a pool. I feel like the way to do this. So I'm trying to like process in my head. I think. What we do, Jeff, and I don't want to step in on your idea in any way. I think we get a bunch of like egg cartons mm-hmm. and we buy a bunch of different various types of eggs that are mm. graded. Egg cards mm. that are graded. Gavin has to pick a, a carton and he doesn't know where the greatest egg is. He can end up with a bunch of rotten eggs. He can end up with a bunch of fucking shitty egg cards. He can end up with a great card. I feel like that's the the way to do this. I Instead love of just love buying every egg. So I'm you, just you're going to make it so that I can miss out on a good egg. I want you to potentially open a box of rotten egg cards, just like the <laughs> shittiest egg cards available. <laughs> and then be like, oh, behind this box is like the PSA 10. This is the greatest egg card of all time, apparently, according to eBay <laughs> at this moment. <laughs> what a fucking stupid thing to put on a baseball card. What else is, other than eggs, what else that's not anything to do with baseball have they put on a yeah, card? Yeah, that's a great question. I don't know. Uh, I, I I really don't. Allen and Ginter, this line, they do this kind of shit every year. They um, and this isn't old. This isn't an old egg. This no, is 2019. 2019. Yeah. Well, the egg might be old. It's the egg that dethroned Stormy Jenner on Instagram as the most liked photo. Why do people care about the egg? I don't know. <laughs> okay, it's just there I, has to be a reason. I just think it's I just think it's ridiculous and stupid. And that if I had to describe Gavin, that would be the two words I use. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to expand on that. I thought you were going to double down on those and, words you would use. No, they, that's the word. Uh, and it, the egg was originally posted on Instagram as an experiment by an unidentified Londoner, and the pick soared to 30 million likes. So, for all I know, Gavin, you could have been the one that posted the egg in the first place. You are also British. Yeah, this is point. true. It could have been. That me. is a fact. Yeah. Yeah. You I'm can't argue. argue that. You are British. <laughs> I think it might be you. I think that's mm-hmm. the only classification we need. That's the all the evidence. Might have just been identified. And he likes eggs, and he likes to say the word egg, and he named my cat egg once. That's true. Is there a special word for stealing eggs? Hmm. I like, you know, like, like, some items, it's, like what, it's what, just what called theft. But, like, if you steal an apple, it's scrumping. 
I didn't know that. No, I didn't. I didn't know <laughs> Apple had its own thing. Oh, you never watched scrumping, scrumping as a child? <laughs> what no. the fuck is what that? What is scrumping? Oh, is that, just, is that a British about? thing? Ooh, I might find a new English thing. <laughs> what is... You mean just like picking apples? <laughs> I fucking yeah, it's, I'm pretty sure... Well, I, don't, I haven't Strump looked up scrumping. I'm pretty sure it just means you've like nicked someone else's apples off their tree. The, de the Cambridge <laughs> de Dictionary <laughs> definition uh, is to steal fruit such as apples from trees. <laughs> yeah, so we need the what's the egg equivalent of scrumping? How do you scrump an egg? Uh, hold on, let me Google that. How uh, do you? I seem annoyed by this. No, you see, you just egg. you said scrumping like it was a legal term. Like people have gone to jail for scrumping. Like it is a thing that are is tried. <laughs> <laughs> what? Am I wrong? It's 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 a name for stealing fruit. It is. It is a hundred percent a name for stealing fruit. Did Andrew leave? I think we lost him. No, I'm here. Can you not hear me? Oh. We lost you for a second. No, you lost you for oh, okay. a second. What was your response? <clears throat> to what? Am I wrong? Are you wrong about what? I don't understand what you're asking me. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? I feel like I missed your question. <laughs> well, I you disappeared again. again. What do you mean? What was the question? Sorry, I'm reading about other uh, words for scrumping. I will say, if you Google, how do you scrump an egg, Google responds with, uh, we think you mean, how do you scramble an egg? Uh, in here, we'll tell you. Can the title of this episode be, how do you how scrump, do you scrump an, egg? an egg? Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't know. This is Humpty. Nick said Humpty Dumpting. <laughs> I didn't. Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> That's another thing. Another reason why Gavin should love collecting eggs is we had the whole Humpty Dumpty discussion about. <laughs> like, we're just becoming a very egg centric podcast lately. Uh, we had shit last time and eggs this time. I guess the Humpty Dumpty thing. Yeah. Oh. Um, Eric says, is there a gray area between scrumping and foraging? Yeah, I guess so. Like, if it's, if it's uh, not a private tree, I assume yeah. it's foraging. If it's yeah. an owned tree or in a, if you're trespassing for the apples, that's probably scrumping. Is scrumping a big problem in England? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's a problem. I feel like it's, it's just like a light crime that school kids do because it's a little bit cheeky. Because I assume most people don't give a shit if you take their Bramleys off the tree. So in America, we have, like, you'll go buy private property, you'll see signs posted that say, like, posted, no trespassing, violators will be shot, stuff like that. Do you see, do you see in England, are there signs on trees that say, like, uh, no scrumping, scrumpers will be prosecuted, posted. Scrumpers will be shot. Sc scrumpers uh, will be shot on site. I bet I've, I think there has been a no scrumping sign at some point. <laughs> <laughs> we need to make a no scrumping shirt Dude, I, it just looks like that a no might be if i put a no scrumping sign on my front lawn that would i think that'd be excellent it would be very confusing to a lot of people I, yeah i'd love to hear what people say we should what the rule is screw the shirt we should sell no scrumping yard signs that people can post in their <laughs> yard or their private property i feel like that would be such a stressful thing if you're like okay we got these people we're putting you're in this field, okay? Uh, no scrumping allowed. If you, you scrump, you're out of the game. And just seeing what people like have to process what scrumping even means, I'd never uh, guess it would be picking apples. I love it without the ing, like to scrump. <laughs> <laughs> you see that oh tree? You scrumped it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That oh, fucking no, scrumper with his bag of apples. <laughs> <laughs> you see all those pies? <laughs> those pies are the product of scrumping? <laughs> Got like black market scrumped pies. I love, I love the idea of a conversation in prison. Like, what are you in for? <laughs> uh, a scrumping. Grand scrumping. <laughs> I stole an 18 wheeler versus of it. Of eggs, oh. grand, it's grand scrump larceny. What is this, Eric? Oh. Scrumping badgers. Oh, bad, badgers scrump. Probably, yeah, they're scrumpers. 
Instead of like teardrops for kills, it's apples for theft and for scrubs. <laughs> Every apple scrub. We should we should just sell a we should make a shirt that has a badger with the no circle and line around it that just says scrumper at the bottom of it. <laughs> Oh. Oh. Yeah, so I think the next merch meeting should be scrumping. <laughs> yeah. Scrumper, no scrumping. <laughs> oh, oh my god, that's great! Wow. Well, that just landed in our laps. That's. I hope the audience sat through the sports portion at the beginning of the podcast <laughs> to hear this. <laughs> oh. Jesus, <laughs> I oh. did not oh. expect. I did not expect that dumb egg baseball card, which, by the way, I bought <laughs> six weeks ago, and I've been meaning to to bring up. Uh, I did not expect it to go the route of scrumping. That that, that what a gift! I don't. Uh, it's funny. So scrumping can be any tree that's owned, like any fruit. It doesn't even have to be a tree. What if I? It's like a bush situation. Is that scrumping? Is it stealing the fruit off of a a thing that somebody else's owns? Is that a book called Scrumping by Harry Newhouse? An erotic short story <laughs> on the consequences of <laughs> apple thievery. Oh Wait. my god. <laughs> Is this on eBay? How do we get this? Yeah, oh, it's on Amazon. Wait a it's on Amazon. It's free on Kindle. <laughs> is is the story of Adam and Eve a scrump story? Is that, oh. is that who? What was the tree? What do they call the original sin? The original scrump. <laughs> <laughs> Adam and Eve is the original scrump. That's how it all went be. wrong. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> that was the origin of all sin. Was a cheeky scrump. <laughs> Oh. Original sin oh. is a scrump. It's like <laughs> it's like uh, humanity began, according to the Bible. Humanity began oh. with scrumping. It's like they say that <laughs> prostitution is the oldest known uh, profession in the world, but it's not. It's scrumping. <laughs> I'm just imagining somebody getting pulled over with a giant sack of apples in their back seat, sweating. <laughs> <laughs> You know when like a, a cop is searching something and they see something of criminal activity yeah. and they just grab their gun and so they just see a big crate of apples. Yeah. <laughs> he like looks at it and goes, like, you're going pretty fast there, man. How, uh, everything okay? And you're like, yeah, uh, sorry, I didn't realize I was spinning. He sees the bag of apples in the back and he just touches the and he goes, ma'am, steps back and goes, ma'am, I get need out. you to get out of the car right get now. Get out of the car right now. Hands on the car, hands on the car. They drive by a cop car, like the lights aren't on yet. They just see it on the side of the road. Pour the apples out. Pour the apples out. They're just throwing apples out the window. <laughs> Eat the apples. <laughs> we should, oh my God, we should read this story. We should do like a pod, we should do like a face uh, shoulder episode oh. where we just read the scrumping story yes. for the audience. Yeah. I think that's good. And, I'm, and, oh. and this is maybe something to do after the jet ski stunt. We'll make oh, yeah. a, a scrumped pie. <laughs> Holy shit. I never Ooh. viewed eating a pie as potentially a criminal offense. This has <laughs> changed my life dramatically. Scrumping. Wow. Oh, man. I feel like I learned so much today. <laughs> Been an educational one. <laughs> so fucking stupid. Oh. How many bullets do you have left, Andrew? I, well, for like things for us to talk about or my bets? <laughs> yeah. I still got your, my five. My got five I have one. It's kind of a bigger thing that we talked about. Is it about. the I superhero feel like thing? I'm, yeah, I feel like I'm the only one that also did the homework on that. So, I, I don't well, know I, I have, a, I, have, I have a, I, you know, I worked. You're not the only one who did the homework. I have an angle there that I'd like to explore, explore. But I don't think we have time to get into the superhero thing. And Gavin, I don't think we've talked to you about that at all, have we? No, we did. Uh, briefly on text. Briefly yeah. on text. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'll say this: I, uh, I survived Survivor. I, f I finally finished the 21 seasons. Now I'm in a living in a post Survivor world. That's kind of cool. Damn, you sped up. I'm still in like yeah. 38. So you're I just not going to watch the other ones? You're I will. I, like, I mean, I finished okay. it. I wanted to get through it so that I could watch the new one and be all caught up. So I watched seasons 20 through 40. Mm. And then when does 41 start? Like at the end of the month? September 22nd, I think, or 26th. Okay. One of those days. Yeah, it's end of the month. Should we try and get probes done? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> he could be our first guest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what about. I'd ask probes. What would you Have ask you probes? <laughs> Does anybody tell us about the what kind of scrumping goes on behind the scenes that we don't know about? Are they scrumping Whenever rice? They pull fruit from a tree in that show. It's not scrumping because nobody owns that. You'd assume, right? You'd assume that's just beach. That's just all the all the breadfruit uh, is uh, is fair game for them. Yes, we could uh, we could take on the responsibility of reporting all global scrumping because I I can't imagine it comes up in the news that often. But if it does, we should 
I feel like we could report that. Has anyone yeah. been to the listeners? What's the biggest consequence to a scrumper? Well, we need to read that erotic novel. It's probably yeah. anal. We'll find out. That <laughs> apparently was about the consequences. I feel like we're going to get six pages into that thing and go like, this was a huge mistake. We cannot do this. <laughs> well, we'll need to see if we have the rights to do it, if we can legally do it. But if we can, I think we have to. Although the comment leavers are welcome to tell us not to if they don't want to hear it. Where, where does copyright, like, are we worried about copyright because it'll get detected? Or like, can I play a snippet of an audio commentary on a movie or is that not allowed, Eric? That's that's not allowed. Audio stuff is pretty cut and dry. But as far as intellectual property, I'm, I've been looking it up as far as intellectual property for uh, like an audio book style situation where we're reading something. I think we can do it. And also we should just do it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> there you go. Eric's usually the no, absolutely not guy. That was a yes from the producer. We have to do it. I love this idea. I think we're going to get three pages. Th Andrew said six pages. I think we're getting three pages in and going, what? I'm not reading this anymore. I think that's what's <laughs> going to happen. Where do the apples go? I guess we'll find out. <laughs> I'm reading a story about scrumping. Look at these fucking criminals. Look at these pardoned <laughs> fucking criminals. That Show looks like, off that looks like a job for the Vancouver child kicker. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's like a, that like a full on heist. He it could does. de scrump that real fast. <laughs> I feel like that would. Oh, you'd get such good air. <laughs> <laughs> if mid scrump, I mean, specifically. <laughs> Just an observation. <laughs> I'm just thinking. Please, about stop, it. please stop kicking children, Andrew. I've never. I would never. I want to be very clear. I don't endorse it. Don't do it. I've never done it. I you would say never I would it. never. You. We've seen the what photo. About it you? looks okay. disturbingly yeah, like you. This is what I didn't say at that time. Okay, and you, this is. I feel like a key piece of information <laughs> that will maybe change your views on that story. I had just seen it follows within like the last few days. Okay. I feel like that's a big shift. That's a movie all about the demon thing can shape into whatever. It can look like anything. Yeah, like, but at, at this point, it wasn't following. It was approaching. The movie's not called It Approaches. What do you mean? If you're following, you approach. You certainly are approaching while following. It's following you behind. Like, when you follow someone, you're following behind them. You were turned around they and were. facing it. I, they were following. Like, when I turned, they were walking towards uh, That's fair. Yeah. How, how close did this person get? Within, I would say... Six feet. They were probably okay. Six so they were six feet from you. At, at which foot marker would you have deployed the kick? I would have deployed it probably at a dinklage and a half. <laughs> okay. I would have taken a step forward. I, I was giving plenty of warnings. I'm so, I really, I do feel like my life would have dramatically shifted if I kicked that kid. I'm so glad I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, think it was six feet away. You must have been. Two feet from kick. That was very close. But it was it. within seven seconds of something happening. I would say <laughs> I gave so many warning. I was trying to talk. It was very scary. It was an intimidating situation. <laughs> I just love that he's six feet away and he's still a, somehow a silhouette. You had no information of his face. I feel like we moved four feet walking backwards and I never saw anything that looked like a face at all. It was just dark outline the entire move. I have never seen this before in my life, but this is fascinating. My two dogs are, I just looked out the window. Both of my dogs are, are perfect, like next to each other, perfectly taking a dump at the exact same time. How, what's the latest on the shit? Three, three inches apart from each other. They're like, it's like synchronized shitting. That's so <laughs> cool. They don't even like each other, but they shit together. That's so neat. How's the, what's, how's the what now? Well, have you had any uh, bad, bad dog shit? experiences uh, nah man life's been pretty shit free for me lately uh I, I, knock on wood um nothing like after that doorknob fell off i haven't really had any house problems as of late knocking on wood again um dogs are fine knocking on wood Whew, yeah it's a uh, it's a uh, something about you going out of the country um uh, makes my problems go too interesting well i'll take another trip we'll test it out <laughs> well just don't do it on fucking Thursdays because I don't want to <laughs> skip another episode. Sorry to, to to interject randomly. I'm reading a story right now of somebody who was charged with scrumping. There's somebody has been there's been a charge filed against someone. So the word scrumping was on the legal documents. On the legal documents. 
Goff had been okay. charged with scrumping in the back garden of a house in Bleckhyden, South Hap- Hampton, South Hampton, B L E C H Y D E N. Uh, magistrates taking the case at the town's petty sessions on August 5th, 1868, were not merciful, sentencing him to seven days hard labor with a warning that if he offended, he would probably be whipped. There was a serious. <laughs> so, <laughs> what year was this? <laughs> It was in 1868, August 5th, ah. 1868. No, this is just Eric's asking if this is from the book we're going to read. No, this is just a <laughs> news story I pulled up. And where was that from? The dailyecho.co.uk. No, I, I mean, okay, so it was, it was in the UK? See, this yeah, is, it was, it was yeah, in Southampton. This is why we fucking got, that's why we got the fuck out of there. This, the draconian scrumping laws. America, we were like, <laughs> we had to start our own company. And that's our own country. And that's why I had never heard, at, nor had Eric or Nick ever heard of scrumping because we escaped scrumping tyranny when we left England. Yeah, it makes sense. Get away from yeah. it. I feel like yeah. this scrump. will stand now as the most mentions of the word scrump <laughs> in any piece of media of all time. I don't think this could be beaten. We're taking the scrump podium and we're going to put, we'll, it, we'll put it right next to our, uh, to our jet ski podium. <laughs> Absolutely. I have two more things to say. Two points that I want to close out. <clears throat> okay. They're very dated right now. Take it away. One, people have asked how I did with my Olympic bets. We haven't recorded since, I guess we did the last one, but oh, I, I went 11 yeah. out of 16 just to clear that up. And the second thing I want to say is I heard, yes, I found out, I do not listen to these, uh, that the plan to order the ice cream came during the chaos that was me getting the first order. And I just want to say I respect the move. I thought that was pre planned. <laughs> I also want to say, Jeff, I think you ordered me more ice cream than you anticipated. You sent me a giant two liter tub of banana ice cream. Yeah, it's not it a big $70. Yeah, I, see, I tried to send fan. you like $100 worth of ice cream. I assumed it was a lot. You sent me a double tub of banana and you sent me a small tub of banana. And so I didn't. <laughs> I say you I, cookie dough too, right? Because you don't like it. You did. You, <laughs> I remember no, you I enjoyed. Saying, I remember you saying that you think something like cookie dough yeah. is the ice cream that people think they like, but then when they have it, it's not as good as they think, or something. So I tried yeah. to, to load you up heavy on that one. No, I, I well, the thing is, I flipped on that. I actually like cookie dough now. I good. reversed that opinion. I enjoyed that. You got me bubblegum ice cream too, which is fine. But mm. it was more of an issue of you got this big tube and you got the little tube. And I opened the first ice cream I tried was the banana ice cream, and I'm like, Jeff loves banana flavor. This I makes do. sense. I've never had banana ice cream. It's fine. I wouldn't eat this regularly. <laughs> I thought I would love Whatever. it. Whatever. I, I was I bet you would adore this fucking ice cream. I, I had it. I'm like, I'm not gonna throw this away. It's not that big of a container. I'll just eat this across time. It's fine. And then I opened the big container. <laughs> and, and, and my realization that this was an even bigger tub of <laughs> banana ice cream was just filled with disappointment. <laughs> I was so excited of like, I got four flavors and they're mystery. I don't know what they are where half of it was just banana ice cream. Oh, that makes my heart happy. Oh, that's yeah. good. Have you eat? Have you gone through all the ice cream yet? Uh, I've, I ate the cookie dough. I have gotten rid of the majority of the banana ice cream. I've tried. I did my best. It's that's just fast. too much. And uh, I still have, I didn't really touch the bubble gum. Still how, about all the, how about all the sweets and pastries? Oh yeah, those are long. You can't you can't yeah, they keep don't, those they don't, going. Yeah. yeah, they don't hold. Good. My favorite part of that is when you stormed off the second time. Like you came, you you were mad leaving because at this point it was it was yeah. the bit was old to you. It was very inconvenient. I just like how you came back the second time, and I could almost picture you like smiling through your teeth. You were like, "Thanks for the ice cream." <laughs> <laughs> Even if, even though you're annoyed, you said thanks. I we just it. wanted we just wanted to celebrate your birthday, man. Here, this is what I'm excited about, Gavin. I talked to you about an idea I had relating to Jeff <laughs> before that. That sort of connects to this. Do you remember that? No. I talked to you about a thing. I'm just. I'll quickly. I'll text you what it is. Okay. And what Jeff did just locked in that I'm going to now do that. So I'm going <laughs> to send you a quick text yeah. just to get your. Re- Reaction. Looking at my phone? Yep. Sending it right now. <sighs> so, I, that's something that we talked about before that happened. Oh, yeah. Now this is just like, it's an absolute. There's going to yeah, be that's a response. That's a guarantee. 100%. It better, we better be able to put it on a t-shirt. Yeah, I think we can. <laughs> okay. Okay. The last thing I sent you, we're, we're doing stuff with. 
So I think oh it's my to say. god, how cool does that look? By the way, yeah, it's awesome. Should we say? I didn't want to say it because yeah, I no, that's fine. Gonna... I think we can okay. say it. Yeah, we're we're doing like pink porta potty mugs, like tiki mug things. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, they look awesome. They look really cool. They look very cool. I don't know when those will come out, but they look great. I think it's been a whole thing. Like they should have been out already, but we got our sample back from the vendor, and it wasn't up to standard, so we switched vendors. And it's been a whole thing. But it's I know the merch department's been working on it diligently in the background. Great. Should we wrap this up? Yeah. Was, yeah. Let's I do it. it. Once again, I feel like we all have so much stuff to talk about, and it's a time issue, and it's the issue of I feel like none of us want to really engage in the thing because we don't have time, but we still have a lot. <laughs> yeah, we come. do. We still have a big thing. It's the thing I feared of having so much that we can't talk about it. That's okay, because we can talk about it next Thursday when we record another episode of F*** Face. Is that the outro? I like, I like the way you said that, like, Thursday is the day that, like, it sounds like <laughs> Thursday is the day the podcast comes out on, which is very cool. No, it's just the day we record. Oh, I no, I understand that, and you understand that. The people who record the show, the, maybe the mm -hmm. people who listen to the show don't. Mm. Well, I think uh, they now they do. We've, the, it's been explained to them very clearly now in this moment. <laughs> yeah. Thanks Thank for listening for to listening. another episode of <laughs> Face. <laughs> what about the calls to action or anything like that? We'll see you next week. Gavin, uh, why don't wait, you wait. give us the calls to action that you love so dearly? It's your favorite oh, part I of the did podcast. that last time. And Andrew. Eric, pick a number between 1 and 60. <laughs> Who, me? We already did this bit. No, 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 there's Eric. no way I'm... Eric. Okay. Uh, Eric, okay. Go. Up. Okay. Uh, think of, think, okay. Think of I'm ready. Can't be 19. I still have 19. No, I'm not. It's not 19. Okay. I, <laughs> I so love our loud. ability to have an amazing moment on the podcast and then just do it again and it's worse. We we're yeah. so good at that. Yeah. yeah. Open the f face. All right. You tell me when you're ready and I will I'm hit ready. I got. I got. Okay. I got ready. My hand. Ready. 47. Nope. Sorry. Nope. Man. Not even okay. close. Goodbye. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.